Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cami, and in today's video, we're gonna be setting up a garden journal. I am so very excited to be setting up this journal. I have been thinking about this for the entire year, pretty much. And I originally planned to set up this garden journal in a different notebook, but I totally changed my mind for a couple reasons. I chose a Hobonichi Weeks because I love the ease of having the weeks already set up so i purchased this 2021 weeks that starts in spring which is perfect because today if i upload this video on time would be the national gardening day and april is also the start of spring so i'm going to show you guys the supplies that i'm going to be using and i have a bunch of things In my little tray here, I have some stamps. So I have these Versa Magic stamps in some shiny, shimmering colors. I really like this for the neutral tints. So you have kind of a beige, a sage green, a copper, and I think a, another kind of um, pale green. And this is kind of the color palette that I'm going for. I also have some rubber stamps here that are just some random floral designs. I'll also be using some of the stamps that I purchased from, I think this was from Stationery Pal. I have to double check, but I'll let you guys know in the comments. Whoops. I'm also using some stamps that I have that will mark some calendars. So if I wanted to quickly do a 30 day challenge or a one week challenge and a habit tracker, I have these ready to go. I've used one of these already in another video. So I really like having that because it's super easy. And then I'm going to use my calendar stamps as well. And I'm gonna be using my calendar stamps as well. This is really just so I can have a cohesive look when I'm creating some spreads or if I want to do some dates that I need to keep track of. I already have some stamps to help with that. And it's always handy, especially when you're dealing with gardening to have dates ready to go. So I have a little date stamp as well. And if I have to mark some things in my notes section, I can create the dates there. All right, so those were all my stamps. I'm now gonna go through some of the stationary supplies and I will link everything in the video description below so you guys can take a look at that. And just a reminder, these are all affiliate links on Amazon, which means if you purchase from them, I'll get a little bit of a commission. So that's one way you can support me and this channel. Anyways, the first thing I have here is a mocha, I think is the name of the color, a mochaccino, Kaweco Sport. And I'm actually gonna open this up right now so you guys can get a better look. All right, so I picked this color because it's just really beautiful and it is a EF nib. I just had to double check because I did buy a couple of other Kawekos that were a medium nib. And this comes with an ink cartridge already, I think. And yeah, and it's not open. Um, I think it's blue. And the reason why I said it's not open is because my sister actually bought two of these in white, super squeaky. And she said that they came opened up and the ink spilled everywhere. So I guess she just had some bad luck. Sorry, Kazal. <laughs> but anyways, this is a Koiko Sport and I just love the color. It's super beautiful. I like that the nib is silver because I do have a white one somewhere here. 
uh, in one of my pen cases. So I have a white one here. This is just inked with a regular black cartridge, but it's uh, gold. So the gold tip matches the brand logo here. And I like how this matches as well with silver. So that is a plus. The next item that I have is actually some converters. So if you're new to fountain pens, you have the option for most pens to use a cartridge, which means the ink is already inside and you just slip it into the body and basically pierce the nib on top of the opening. So there's a bottom and there's a, an opening here. And when it pierces through, it can draw the ink up into the nib. Or if you want to use your own kind of inks, because when you deal with cartridges, you have a very limited selection, you can use these um, cartridges, or sorry, these converters. And you have to just look up the ones that are compatible with your pen. I know that there are, are options for third party or universal ones, but I would just double check with what kind of pen you have and make sure that the pen that your get your using and the converter is compatible and so this tiny guy is the converter for this Kaweco Sport so I'm going to be using my own ink for this setup because I have just started collecting um, super blurry but I have just started collecting a bunch of inks so I picked out one ink that I really really like which I'll show you right now and so this bottle of ink is from Organic Studio. It's the Henry David Thoreau, which is kind of a shimmery ink. I actually fell in love with the Ralph Waldo Emerson one, which is kind of a dark blue with a red shimmer. I have that in one of my pens here already in my Twisby Rose Gold. I'm actually almost out, and this was a sample. Unfortunately, I can't buy this from the website that I usually shop at because they're sold out, and so I'm kind of waiting for them to stock up so I can snag it. But this one is equally good from the samples that I've seen, and it's more of a blue-green, which is nice. So I'm gonna be inking it up with that. And the next item I have here is basically, well, I guess we should talk about the notebook. So the notebook here is a Hobonichi Weeks. Again, it's the 2021 spring, so it starts in April, so we're not too late, and I'm not wasting too many pages, but um, I was battling, <clears throat> I, was a little conflicted because I wasn't sure if I wanted to get a custom cover like my other Hobonichi Weeks, which I love the cover of. This is just so beautiful. And I should have used this one for my gardening journal, but I started this at the beginning of the year and I'm using it as just a random task dump journal. So I've actually been using that a lot, almost every day. And so I opted for just a plain beige one because I realized that if I'm going to be writing on this in the garden or outside or even inside while working with seeds, I want something that isn't too pretty on the cover and I'll most likely be putting it inside of a case or a notebook cover. Anyways, one of the other reasons why I purchased a separate notebook instead of the original one that I was planning for. Um, I think I was going to use the Loischstrom 1917 in A5, but I changed my mind because I really do like the Tomoe River paper that is used in the Hobonijis, and I find that if I like writing on the paper, I will like reaching for the notebook. So if I have a pen with ink that I really like and then a notebook with paper that I really like, I'll really stick to it. And so that was part of the decision making factors of getting the Hobonichi Weeks. And the next couple items I have here are just extra little 
uh, accessories for the Hobonichi. So starting with this cover, like I mentioned a little bit ago, I don't think I want to get this cover too damaged. And if I am going to be bringing this outside or working with seeds and dirt, I want to make sure I have something that protects it. So I purchased this clear cover case for the Hobonichi Weeks that also has a pen loop. And the idea is that I can use this to protect my notebook and also stuff some things in. And so that's gonna go over here. And what's also nice about clear covers is that you can put stickers and stuff um, on the inside and you can decorate it and it would still look really nice. The next item I have here is just some craft labels. So I wanna have a really cohesive look to this notebook. I don't wanna think about decorating it too much or what will look nice. So I already pre-selected some accessories and stickers and washi tape that I'm gonna be using throughout the entire notebook. And that way I don't have to worry about thinking of designs and decorations. Everything's already pre-selected and so I chose some craft labels because I want to use them as kind of headers so I'm going to stamp out things like you know important dates or something like that and use that to decorate my spreads and then I also have some memo notes in the beige kind of color palette that I'm going to use to plan things like when I should be planting seeds or transplanting or fertilizing. And I wanted to have memo notes so that I can stick it and restick it when I need to. And finally, one of the other items I wanna show is uh, my pocket printer. I don't really think I'm gonna use this too much except maybe print out a couple of pictures of the garden to kind of inspire me to open the notebook all the time. So I don't know if I'm gonna use it. I'm just gonna have it here and ready to go whenever I need it. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is a haul, of course. And I shopped at Together with KX's uh, store recently. You can see all the washi tape here that I have of hers. I'm a huge, huge fan of her products. So I am gonna do just a non-sponsored shout out in this video. She actually um, helped me put together another video, which probably have already released, but if it's already out, I'll link it up here in a card. But I did a journal with me with some of her products and I'm also doing a giveaway in that video. So hopefully you guys had a chance to check that out. But I also purchased some more things because I definitely wanted to have everything I needed for this particular video. So I'm going to do an unboxing and I wanted to show you guys all the goodies that I got. Starting with this, obviously we know what it's gonna be. It is a new washi tape to add to the collection. Unfortunately, I am out of space on my washi tape dispenser. I just can't seem to have enough dispensers. But what's really nice about this pattern is that it is a ginkgo leaf, I believe, with some super cute patterns of acorns and leaves and it's a nice muted tone. I'm just gonna open it up here so we can take a look at it. And let's see if we can pull it out. All right, here you go. Some washi tape. Love, beautiful. And I love the quality of these tapes. They don't feel cheap at all. I'll leave a link to her shop if you guys wanna check it out. But I know that she doesn't really have a lot of stock of her washies because they go so, so fast. And the next item I wanna open, I don't even remember purchasing this, so this might actually be like a little extra gift. So thank you, Kelly, so much if that's the case. Um, I remember missing out on this, so I'm so, so happy 
Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. This is uh, one of the items that she had in her shop a while ago and I just completely missed out on it. Um, I, I think what ended up happening is my son woke up from a nap when I was waiting for her to drop the update. So I'm so glad she gave me one. I feel so special, um, but this is gonna be perfect for my gardening journal. She actually hand assembles these. So if you are interested in getting one, follow her store and her shop and her Instagram. She's very, very active and um, will update you guys if she's planning to do another drop soon. But that is so pretty. I am so excited. Okay, so with the gardening journal in mind, I wanted to, of course, keep with the color palette, but also I wanted to get stuff that I knew I would use. So here are some sticker sheets that are the perfect size to slip into the notebook. If you can see that they will fit just right. And that's what one of the reasons why I purchased this sticker sheet set. And I got some beautiful plant th botanical themed washi tape strips, as well as some dates and um, days of the week. So these all fit the same color palette, which is really nice. This might be a little too big. Um, I mean, I can probably try to squeeze it in there. Maybe I'll trim the sides a little more, but I want to have a habit tracker or calendar handy and ready to go if I ever feel the urge to try to track something. So we have a business card. If you guys um, want to check her out, this is her information. So she has a website and an Etsy shop. And let's see, I think she has some really cute freebies. So this is new. I think this is her latest freebie, which I actually hoard these and I keep them in my daily travelers notebook journal. So I'm gonna actually slip this in here because I love having this size sticker sheets in my passport. And a couple other freebies, which I'll probably put on the front, but she has some Polaroids in a very light pink and peach color with some illustrated flowers. So those are really pretty. And a boba sticker, which I believe this was part of her contribute to the Stop Asian Hate Movement. And so I actually purchased a lot of these already. I think I purchased two five packs recently, but she threw in, I think, one for free. So thank you so much. I'm definitely putting that on the cover. Oh, these are the stickers that I was talking about. Okay, so I did purchase them. And yeah, she had a fundraising sticker for the AAPI um, organization. And she just has a little thank you note. And I purchased the boba stickers, which I'm actually going to find places to stick these in. But I'll show it to you guys in case you're interested in purchasing them. Oh my God, the boba washi tape, you guys, is so cute. I bought extra because I have cousins and my sister who love boba and they always go out to drink boba so I was gonna give some to them but these are so cute. They're just super adorable. I also got this memo pad which I actually already have one of these but I kind of want to try to find a way to stick it into my notebook so that I have just loose paper ready to go if I needed to jot something down. And then finally, just some really fun sticker sheets. Again, I tried to pick stuff that fit the color theme and the theme of the whole notebook in general. So starting with the larger ones, I have a stamps of botanicals, just some regular colored dots in a neutral warm palette. And some of them has some floral decoration on them. And of course, these mini sheets that will fit perfectly in the notebook. These are some adorable juice boxes some watercolor flowers, watercolor in green because plants are green, so I wanted to throw a little bit of green in there, some abstract botanical art, and these two stickers, actually she had, I think, a release where she did these on washi tape paper, which was beautiful, but I um, I'm hoarding those as well in my passport. So I bought some regular ones so I can use it in here. And then just some extra really 
tall and narrow sticker sheets that fit the color theme as well. So we have some hearts, some hexagons, ovals, and all of these have a botanical illustration on them and some more circles. I think these are just round, plain round ones. And that's it for the little haul. I'm actually gonna get started in setting up and I will possibly throw you guys to a voiceover to walk you through my setup. All right, we are officially in the voiceover section and I am currently in the video um, writing out a list of pages and spreads that I want to um, use in my garden journal. <laughs> you can see my fingers are really inked up and it's because I just filled up the ink for that pen and I messed up the first time I did it I did it so wrong so I had to empty out the um, converter and um, do it again but I switched from my Kaweco sport pen to my Twisby because the ink in that pen was not working well with the memo pad. That's one of the hard things about fountain pens and inks is finding compatible paper. Anyways, I wrote down a list first of all the spreads I wanna make and that way I can just run on autopilot. first thing I'm going to do is decorate the cover page for the garden journal. I am using these beautiful silicone stamps that I got on Amazon. I'll link all of the products in the video description below. But what I love about these stamps is first of all they're really affordable. I think this um, one stamp was probably like six dollars or something but they range from six to eight dollars for one sheet and a little bit more if you have two sheets but I am inking it with my Versamagic ink pad, which I have seen a lot and I um, originally purchased because I wanted to jump on the bandwagon, but I realized that ink is actually the best ink to work with on um, Tamoy River paper. And so I'm just stamping the corners of the um, pages and to kind of give it a bit of a, um, pattern look to it. I forgot to ink up the uh, rubber stamp uh, a second time. Uh, I think I tried to just use the same round of ink and so you can see that's why there's a missing spot in the center. Luckily I have some washi tape and some of those craft stickers that I can use to cover up the mistake. I've gotten really good at figuring out ways to hide things when they go wrong. And I am using stickers from Together with KX. I'm officially a rep for the What's month the of um, June and July. I was a rep in May um, as well, but we're now in June. And I think when you see this video, it will still be in the month of June. Anyways, I am using a date stamp to mark the day that I recorded this video, which, oh my gosh, April 14th. <laughs> we are now in June. Um, this just goes to show you how long it takes me to get to some videos. I talk about it in um, my June bullet journal plan with me video, but having multiple notebooks is causing a little bit of a video build up problem. Um, I just have too much content to uh, work with. But anyways, I'm using stickers from Together with KX to decorate the portion of the stamp that didn't quite work out and I dated the beginning of this journal. And the reason why I dated is because I plan to use this for the whole year. I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't used it since I made this video. I think I made one more collection list for seeds that I um, wanted to plant, but I haven't picked it up since then and I have a feeling that I'm probably going to only use this um, for uh, testing out uh, ideas. I am not keeping up with the daily logging, which um, is probably something to note is that if you are not consistent with logging daily, I would suggest not using a dated planner and go for something undated. 
Anyways, I stamped out the word garden with my stamps that, again, I got from Amazon, I think. And um, I'm writing in the word journal, so you can see that there is a nice um, contrast between the two different uh, style of lettering. I like doing this um, for headers and titles, so it's just a stable line like that I know works. Another thing to do is to do a different color, so if you uh, have two um, different tones of the same color, that always works nice as well, but I chose to do black. And I added some washi tape on the top and bottom, and right now I'm printing out an actual photo of my garden, which is so crazy because since I made this video, the garden has changed so much. The biggest thing that's changed is we rearranged some things. So um, in the summer, the sun pattern has changed, and so I have moved some of the planters to where they're going to get the most uh, sun in the day and specifically the plants that need the most sun. I think I talk about this um, in other videos, but we don't get a lot of sun in our backyard, unfortunately. In the springtime, we only saw about two, maybe three hours of sun in all the spots, some even less. And this season, actually, we've seen uh, I want to say three to six hours of sun and the six hours is a few hours of dappled light in the morning and in the afternoon so I'm really grateful that we ended up having a little bit more sun in the summer um, anyways I'm filling out some details about my gardening area so I wrote in my zone which is 9b and um, I can't remember what else I wrote, but I wanted it to kind of feel like a profile um, sort of thing, but I didn't really have any more info. So I just put in some really cute stickers. This boba sticker was actually a um, fundraiser sticker, which I believe might still be in the shop, but um, you're more than welcome to check out her website. And I have a code as well to use. It's Cammy's Cottage 15 and you get 15% off your purchase. I'm flipping to the year overview spread. I don't know what you actually call this, but in the bullet journal community, this is like the yearly overview where you can see the entire year. And I am new to the vertical format. It actually has never really worked for me in the past, especially for the day format. So I, it was a little tricky um, for me to figure out how I wanted to use this. But basically what I did was write in my um, dates for the seasons in my area. So basically when spring ends and summer begins and then when summer ends and fall begins and then so on. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the rest of the calendar. I love that you can see literally every single day on this page, but I don't really think I have anything too much to track um, in this journal. Uh, so I just wrote out um, like when summer started, when fall started, that way I have like a visual representation. Um, but I think this would be really helpful if you have uh, things that you um, need to do on a weekly or daily yeah, basis know. and you want to use yeah. it as a giant habit tracker. For example, if you wanted to yeah. keep track of how many times you fertilized so or um, whether or not you moved your plants indoors and outdoors if you needed to do that. Um, for us in our backyard, we have to move our plants two times a day, one um, in the morning and then one in the afternoon so that it gets a full six hours of sun. And then I'm actually using some of the grid washi tape uh, to cover up the top of the year um, spread because I'm not really using that information. It's not that important and I wanted to add some more decoration. Now that I'm looking back at it, I remember this spread was specifically really difficult to decorate because there really wasn't any room to add some stickers or some drawings. So I really had to rely on that top row to add some pizzazz. 
and I just used some of the stickers to line up um, any of the spots that I wasn't using so I had to find stickers that were small or thin enough that I could kind of overlay on some of the sections and I think I go back later and add more stuff to this but I don't think I recorded it and as you can see right now I'm crossing out days I I think what I had in mind was that I would cross out every day that passed by so that I would be forced to open up my notebook and journal about the garden, but it's just been really difficult to do that. So yeah, that is the final look of the yearly overview. Again, I think I add more stuff later. You'll see it in the flip through. And then I move into the monthly spread, which I had a little bit more room to work with. And this is actually a spread that I used a lot in my planning for my plants. And so I wish that I used it a little bit more often after I finished planning because I could have tracked things on here. But basically what I wrote down in the bottom right hand corner and in the Hobonichi weeks you already have a section for some prioritized tasks. And I wrote down the things that I wanted to do for that month. I think specifically I wanted to release some ladybugs that I purchased. We have a huge aphid problem or at the time we had a huge aphid problem and we bought a bunch of ladybugs from Amazon of all places and I think they came like half of them came dead which was really unfortunate and I thought that maybe it was because we didn't pick it up from the mailbox as soon as it was delivered or something um, so we ordered a second round of ladybugs and they were still not that great I uh, released them in the backyard and they just they didn't stay or multiply or anything so I don't think I'll be doing that again at least if I do I'm not gonna buy them online I'm gonna go to the store personally and grab them but you can see I'm marking off all the days which is just completely irrelevant now because I could have used those days to plan other things but I really wanted to focus on the time that I have so that's why I blocked out those days but now that I have a little bit more experience with the Hobonichi I use space that isn't used for a bunch of random things and so I fill out some stuff here on the side uh, there's like a note section and I was using it to mark out uh, how many weeks until the next season so at the time there was nine weeks till summer and I was supposed to start my summer seedlings but I never got around to it because I got so busy and now I'm uh, trying to plan for the fall season but this is the almost finished look so I was able to use some washi tape and some stickers to get some uh, decoration in there and I think I'm using this memo pad sheet to make a tab and I find this a super convenient hack. One of the things I don't like about the Hobonichi weeks is that the months and the weeks are separate in the notebook. I prefer to have the monthly calendar right before the set of weeks that corresponds to it. So I created this tab so that I could easily flip back and forth from my week setup to the monthly spread and this worked out really well I just didn't continue keeping up with it so I don't have any tabs for the other months I think what I would suggest is if you're doing something like this you should probably make it for all the months just so it's already said and done but um, that's just some something I should have uh, thought of when I was making it but it works and what's nice about also using a memo pad is if it's not in the right spot you can move it to where you need to be. Tomoe River paper is really thin and doesn't really handle um, messing around with stickers laying it and pulling it the page will either tear a little bit or curl up but yeah, I really liked this idea of using the tab. And so if you look at the weeks, you see that they're super far away from the months. So that's why I had to do a tab. I 
I wanted to start off the next um, spread in the back of the book, which I am using to uh, fill out some collections. And so the first collection I did on the right hand side, which are important dates for me to remember, this actually I used a lot when I was planting my seeds because I usually have this set of dates in my phone and I always have to open up my phone, find it in my notes, and then uh, I'll get distracted with a text or Instagram. And so it was nice to have it written down. And so when I was working on the seeds for fall, I just opened up this page and I had it ready to reference. And the way that I did the collections page is I would put down a washi tape uh, as a background kind of decoration and I took the craft label sticker and I used that as kind of a header and I wrote in the title of the collection so on the right hand side was important dates and on the left hand side which is what I'm working on right now is a garden layout. This was really helpful um, when I was rearranging the garden the first time. What I wish I would have done is drawn the layout of the garden in pen and then sketched out the containers that I have for my plants in pencil. That way I could just erase it and change it um, whenever I need it, but I didn't update this uh, notebook after I um, rearranged everything. So I really just use this as a reference and also as a talking point with my husband because we were trying to figure out where the best place was for everything and so I used this to kind of show him where I wanted things to go. But this is a quick layout of my garden. So on um, that long horizontal bar at the top of the square is the far back wall of our backyard. So there is a long planter there that's about I want to say two feet wide. And then I have the greenhouse, which we pretty much took the cover off of, and it's just the frame, but it's still really useful for putting our plants there. And then I have all these containers that we have purchased um, from Home Depot. They're mostly whiskey barrels and grow bags. And again, I completely rearranged this because we recently purchased a steel garden bed so it doesn't look anything like that but that is how we decided to do all the layout and here is a final flip through of the spread so here is the cover page that i really really love i am kind of obsessed with the way this came out and here's the future log. As I mentioned, I added a little bit more flair, so I wrote in future log on the top. And I am using that tab for you to see that it's really easy to flip through to the month. And I added some really cute stickers to the monthly spread. And then I filled out the first week, which I don't think I had recorded. That was probably my fault. <laughs> but. Um, Basically, I was supposed to journal on the right-hand side and then write down tasks on the left-hand side, which I have not been able to keep up with, if I'm being honest. So I will probably change the way I do this journal next year. But what was really helpful is the collections. So I am using this a lot, actually, to jot down just some quick notes and stuff that I want to reference later. And so I think I just have the spring plants and the uh, garden layout as well as the dates to remember but it's nice to be able to have a place for me to put in whatever I need to remember for the garden. Some things I'm going to do next year or maybe this year is the um, when to plant things calendar. And so I'm actually tucking the Hobonichi Weeks into a cover that I purchased for it. I really like these thin covers because one of the reasons why I love the Hobonichi Weeks is because it's really thin. So when I lay it flat on the table, my hand doesn't really hang off the edge too much when I write on the edges of the notebook, which means that I ha am comfortable writing and my handwriting looks decent. So I really recommend the clear cover pages and then I'm just taking all the stickers from Together With KX's shop that I used in this journal and you can tell they're all um, 
floral themed and they're all super cute and will match all the themes that I've put in the notebook so far. And I think I just kind of arranged them so that they can fit into the pockets. I specifically picked out the sticker sheets that could fit in the Hoponichi since it's a little bit more narrow than a normal notebook. And that's what's nice about uh, Kelly's shop is that she has a bunch of different sizes, which is really nice. So I stick the taller ones in the back pocket, which is super convenient. And then these tiny smaller ones will fit in the smaller pockets. And I like the variety of different styles of stickers as well. So you have some that are floral, which can stand on its own. And you also have some that look like washi tape or like this hexagon sticker here. And of course I love tiny freebies. So I made sure that I included that as well into the sticker pack. I think I move it towards the front too, because I know that I'll reach for that, um, quite often and stickers are a really nice way to decorate your cover page if you don't really have time to make it look nice so it really worked out that I am using my rep package for this video and finally this beautiful charm that I got I am just so in love with it I don't think she has these currently in her shop. This is something that she released quite some time ago and she actually handmade these herself. So she mentioned to me that she probably won't be doing this too often, but she was so kind enough to have one for me because I was not able to purchase the first set because I think I was really busy with my son or with work. But again, I'm just so in love with it and I keep trying to get the camera to focus so you guys can see. It's a beautiful little leaf with some yellow, or sorry, white stars on gold rings and I just love it so much. I used it to mark the first, or sorry, the current week of the Hobonichi notebook, but Actually, I'm using it now to mark my pages for my other Hobonichi weeks, which is what I'm using as my no rules journal. And I write in that every day, multiple times a day. So I pretty much stole that paper clip. <laughs> And that's it for this video. I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I love doing journals and notebooks and planners. So if you are interested in more videos, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button so that you get notifications. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel to either leave a comment or like the video. And I am going to say that I did not keep up with this journal for a bunch of different reasons but hopefully I'll be able to talk about that in an upcoming video or if I haven't already released the video already I don't really know when I'm gonna release this one but thank you guys again so much I am really excited to be able to share my gardening stuff with you and so let me know in the comments if you want to see an update of my garden and if you want me to do a garden walkthrough or something I'd be more than happy to do it and that's it I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one bye